in the heart of every human being there is a sense of scattering which cannot be brought back together except by turning to Allah and in the heart of every human being there is a sense of loneliness which cannot be put out except by being close to Allah and in the heart of every human being there is anxiety and there is a sense of fear and unease which cannot be removed except by fleeing to Allah and in the heart of every human being there is a sense of guilt and regret which cannot be removed except by being pleased and content with Allah. Do you want to know the effects of Iman, ya ikhwan? Then I say the following, Iman substitutes loneliness, sadness, depression, confusion into happiness, peace of mind, and ability to sleep well at night, a sense of purpose and direction. I swear by Allah, the one who possesses your soul and mine, that these are values that cannot be attained without Iman, regardless of the smiles that people issue. You in public, they cannot be attained without Iman. Why? Because the human heart, it possesses voids. The human heart has compartments. And in order for you to be a happy individual, every one of these compartments need their fill. There is the compartment of food, which needs its fill. There is the compartment of drink and marital relations, which need their fill. Shelter, peace and security, which need their fill. But there is another compartment. And this is where the vast majority of humanity have failed in filling. This is the compartment that says, I want to know Allah. I want to obey Allah. I want to please Allah. That is a compartment that needs its fill as well. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he says, speaking about these voids, listen, listen, wallahi, to these tremendous heart-softening words. Inna fil qalbi sha'athun la yadummuhu illa al-iqbalu ala Allah. In the heart of every human being, there is a sense of scattering which cannot be brought back together except by turning to Allah. وَفِي الْقَلْبِ وَحْشَةٌ لَا يُزِيلُهَا إِلَّا الْأُنْسُ بِاللَّهِ And in the heart of every human being, there is a sense of loneliness which cannot be put out except by being close to Allah. وَفِي الْقَلْبِ قَلَقٌ وَخَوْفٌ لَا يَذْهَبُ إِلَّا بِالْفِرَارِ إِلَى اللَّهِ And in the heart of every human being, there is anxiety and there is a sense of fear and unease which cannot be removed except by fleeing to Allah. وَفِي الْقَلْبِ حَسْرَةٌ وَفِي الْقَلْبِ حَسْرَةٌ لَا يُطْفِئُهَا إِلَّا الرِّضَى بِاللَّهِ And in the heart of every human being, there is a sense of guilt and regret, which cannot be removed, except by being pleased and content with Allah. I will never forget the story of the British man who embraced Islam for one of the strangest reasons that you will ever hear. And I heard this story through one of the mashayikh, one of the scholars of Egypt speaking about a British man who embraced Islam in Hyde Park. What does he say? He said, Ya Sheikh, I embraced Islam so that I can sleep. The Sheikh said to him, Brother, come on, we have enough people sleeping in our Ummah. You want to be another sleeper as well? The Ummah is already asleep. Subhanallah, may Allah Almighty bring the Ummah back to its wakeful state. Ya Sheikh, I, I wanted to sleep. And they laughed and they joked together and they had a good time. Then he said to him, tell me about your story, my brother. He said, Ya Sheikh, I was a man who used to struggle so much at night to get an hour or two of sleep. And I would take all sorts to put me to bed. Heroin, injections, my room would be air conditioned, the most expensive beds I, I possessed, and I couldn't nap it out. I couldn't put myself to sleep. He said, one day I was sat on my balcony, looking over into Hyde Park, and then he said, I saw one particular individual walking in the park, and then when he got a little bit tired, he went under a tree, put his head down and fell asleep instantly. And he started snoring as well. And you, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. I mean, there's him injecting himself to sleep and he still can't pull it off. So he comes down, enters the park, and he wakes him up. The poor man wakes up. What happened? He says, who are you? He says, I'm, I'm a Muslim. He said, what does it mean to be a Muslim? And he began to explain to him the basic pillars of Islam in a very simple way because he was a very simple man. And then he said to him, do all Muslims sleep like this? And he began to explain to him and elaborate who Allah and the Messenger and the Quran is. And then he said to him, I want to embrace Islam so that I can sleep like you. 
Allahu Akbar. See, you take this for granted. So he takes him by the hand and they, they go to the local Islamic center and he utters his shahada, he embraces Islam, he has his shower, they teach him the basics and then the night came in. They said to him, sleep on your right. So he turned to his right. They said to him, now you say the adhkar, the remembrances which the Prophet ﷺ taught us to say before we sleep. So he began to say the adhkar, these remembrances, and lo and behold, they found him snoring instantly. He slept. Didn't we say that one of the definitions of Imam was peace and security? Allahu Akbar. He slept and then the time for Fajr came. So they woke him up and he woke up saying, no, no, leave me alone. See, he, he can't believe that he's asleep. Leave me, I'm sleeping. I'm sleeping. They said, they said, it's time to pray now. It's time to pray now and we'll put you back to sleep straight after the prayer. These are values, brothers and sisters, that you and I take for granted. You sleep knowing your purpose of existence. You sleep knowing that you're under the protection of Allah. You sleep knowing where you're going to go after you pass away. One of two homes. How many people struggle with these? That is why I say that these values of happiness and serenity and peace of mind cannot be attained only through the avenue of Iman.